Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all having a great day so far. So before I get into this video, I want to thank you so much for everybody who, who commented on my video last Monday. I really do feel so much better getting that out and also honoring my mother's memory, even though it's been a year. It still hurts. And so I do appreciate all the comments. Really made me feel a whole lot better. So I just want to get that out of the way. Alright, so in this video guys, I'm going to show you guys how to upgrade your Hidados weapon into the final product of Higurika. This has to be the most easiest, straightforward relic step in Eureka, which is very nice. It's always the victory lap of the weapon, and it's just extremely easy to get through, unlike the other ones that we have had to go through. Alright. So the very first thing you want to do is get yourself to level 60. Technically level 59 works just fine, but you want to be 60 because you want to be very, very able to withstand any attack the NMs throw at you. But level 59 is the lowest requirement to get the final item from the Notorious Monster of Eureka. Alright, so getting to level 60 is the most important thing. Geralt basically will be accessible very off the bat when you talk to Kryl and get the story done first. So he'll be the first quick thing you'll be getting. So the very first step for the upgrade is simple. 50 Hydados Crystals. That's basically the first step. That will give you a Hydados weapon. It is basically just the Pyrus looking weapon. So it does not change until you get to Eureka. Step 2. A hundred Hidados Crystals. No more, no less. You're going to have to kill a lot of Notorious Monsters because the lower ones drop 4 to 5, while the 60 ones drop mostly, I think, about 10. Okay, so that's step 2. That'll give you a plus 1. Step 3, another hundred Hidados Crystals. Nothing more. That's basically step 3. Step 4. And yes, there is a step 4. This is the first time there's actually 4 steps to this weapon. You need another 100 Hydatos Crystals, so 350 total and 5 scales of the Providence Watcher. That is the Zuzu of Hydatos. Most people call him Moist Zuzu, Wet Zuzu. I call him Dragon Daddy because it is a dragon. It's in the patch notes if you guys haven't seen it. And it spawns completely different from the other Notorious Monsters in Eureka. There's no weather condition, and there's no time condition. All you need to do is kill four notorious monsters, and then kill its mob to, in order to summon the Providence Watcher. It takes roughly above 100 kills of the Crystal Claws in order to spawn him. Alright, so I'm going to be taking you guys to the areas for the four notorious monsters that you guys need to kill. So there's going to be a couple of jump cuts. So I will see you guys at the position of the first notorious monster. All right, so here we are at, let's see here, 11.5, 24.0, and the squids. These little 55 water squids is the first notorious monster you'll be spawning. It's basically a giant version of these little small guys. Kill enough of these and it should pop just fine. Another reason why you want to get to level 60 as soon as possible, your mount. This will help you immensely get around Hydados. As you can see, there's only two crystals here. And also, as you can see, there's a notorious monster that you need to kill as well. And he's going to be up here, so that's where we're going to go next. So I will see you guys when I get there. Alright, so the second notorious monster is going to be this bird over here. In order to spawn him, you're going to have to kill these um, dodos here. And it should pop within about at least 30 or plus mobs. But this one's going to be the second notorious monster you're going to have to kill. So I'm going to quickly kill this, and then I'll get back to the next one. Alright, so after that, the notorious monster is dead. The next one is going to be the Minotaur. Now, it's kind of weird that because there's Matangas around, you'd think that would be the mob to kill for the Minotaur. But not really. It's actually these over -gi uh, giant Ochu thingies. Kill enough of these, and the Minotaur will spawn. So this is going to be your third Notorious Monster. And last, but not least, is going to be the Elephant Notorious Monsters. 
you're gonna have to kill these little elephants here to summon the giant red version of them. This is gonna be the fourth and final Notorious Monster you're gonna to have to kill in order to spawn the Providence Watcher. So now I'm gonna take you over to where it would spawn and I'll show you guys what they look like to spawn the, the Providence Watcher. So I will see you guys in a bit. So here we are in front of the Crystal Dragon's Bloom and here are the Crystal Claws that you're gonna be killing. You have to kill roughly around 100 plus in order for the Watcher to spawn on that island over there. So you're going to have to group up for about 8 people is probably the most efficient way. If you can, get at least 3 organized groups going and to kill at least 30 of each. This way you get around 90 for 3 groups and then kill a couple more until that sucker spawns over there. Now, the dragon is a mixture of other bosses meaning the use abilities that basically comes from primals and also shinryu so it's, it's basically a reskin of nidhogg because he also does a little bit of abilities from nidhogg so the one thing that he does from nidhogg is hot tail he does this tw twice in a row he also will do a scarlet whisper attack so it's a breath attack that you don't want to be in front of he also will do a roar attack, which can almost kill you if you're under leveled. So it's very important that you guys be at least level 59 or 60, because that's when you actually will get his drop. He will also will do ice and wind, or wind and um, ice and leaven. If you see ice and wind, he will put down tornadoes, just like Bahama did, except they'll be a little bit permanent. And then you also will do ice pillars like in Fenrir. They will point inward, so make sure you're behind them or out of the way. If you're lagging, you're probably going to get hit by an invisible spike. So be well prepared if you die out of nowhere. If you see ice and leaven, you'll do lightning strikes. Which you'll, it's basically an AoE that you'll see. And the ice attack, don't an AoE around him. The only safe spot is underneath his hitbox. Anybody outside is going to either die or suffer severe damage. So if you see Ice and Levin, get in the middle, dodge the lightning strikes, Ice and Wind, watch out for the pillars, and watch out for the tornadoes. He will also will do Ifrit's dash charges. He just puts two by him, by him side and one by himself. As long as you're away from all three and not in the vicinity of one of them, you should be just fine and he'll return to the party. Those are basically the only attacks that I've seen him do. So as long as you dodge all those and heal through the destructive roar, you should be doing, you should do just fine and he'll be down in no time. He also does a forge change, which means he just changed elementals. So when you see that reforge and he turns and, and he turns like a giant ball around him, means you have to change your magia board to whatever elemental that he's at. So just do it um, if, I, if you target an enemy. For PS4, it's swear they'll come up with set magic board aspect offensive or defensive. Just do offensive and it'll switch to the element that he switched to. This way, you guys won't be doing less damage. You're gonna need about two kills of the Providence Watcher, and he'll drop the crystalline scales. A beautiful scale, a facet scale that fell off in the back of the Providence Watcher. You need at least two kills, and you should be all set. So, two kills of these, a hundred of these, and the last step will give you the 4 off 5 weapon that looks just like this. That's the glow, and it also kind of has like a little, kind of like, like a dragon fishy scale attached to it. Some of the designs for this, these weapons are horrendous. I'm not going to name them, but it's, it, they're just really bad if, for some of them. I would say Dark Knight and Samurai had the best looking weapons and all the Eureka weapons in this game and this so far. So basically those are the notorious monsters you need to kill to spawn the Providence Watcher and basically that's all you need to know on how to upgrade the Eureka weapon for the final step. And it will be a 405. Now, substats. Here's the bad part. You're gonna have to go back to Pyros to get the substats. You don't have to, re you don't, there's no re-rolling in Hydados. There's no Crystal Forge. You have to go back to Pyros if you want the substats. 
The good thing about it is you're already highly already leveled and you know all the notorious monsters. So getting them, the stats won't be that hard. Once you get the ability to get all five slots, you'll be able to basically get the best stats this weapon can give you. I highly recommend that you try to get higher than uh, Seriu's weapon stats. For Samurai, it's 243 crit and 240 determination. If you can get higher than that, you should be good to go. You should be fine with your stats. But they are making you go back to Pyros to do your substats. I had no problem with that. I find it to be just fine. So basically, that's how you get your substats. I kind of think it's better because it helps people go back to Pyros. It helps people catch up and all that. So... Basically, that's all you guys need to know on how to upgrade your Eureka weapon to its final step. It's a victory lap, so it's very easy to do. It's not very hard. Make sure you get your level up to 60. Kill every notorious monster out there. Get your crystals and get this weapon done. If you're doing it for glamour, you're doing it for best in slot, whatever you want to do, go for it. Alright guys, so that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this useful. Any comments, questions, concerns, put them in the comment section down below. I've been really happy to answer any questions you guys might have. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new for more Final Fantasy XIV Stoneblood content. And as a reminder, make sure you hit that notification bell next to my subscribe button. This way you guys will never miss an upload. So until next time, guys, may you forever walk in the glorious light of Lord Bahamut. Take care, guys, and good luck.